Okay, introducing on my next special guest now, we have Erin Bloomer. Uh, she's a UK singer-songwriter uh, joining me, just getting on the, my show to find out a little bit more about her and uh, plug and promote a new single. Firstly, Erin, how are we today? I am very good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Glad to hear it. Now, of course, you are um, an established uh, singer now. You're up and running. Um, how long have you been like recording music for? I would say I've been probably, properly, sorry, releasing since I was about 15 and I'm 22 now. So I guess, yeah, seven years-ish. I released my first song when I think I was about 14. So seven, eight years, I yeah. would say. So it's been a while now. Right. Well, my childhood or teenagedom, you could say. So um, recording for like uh, seven years um, and performing for, would you say, like most of your life, you know, when you were when you were little growing up was like being on stage, uh, what you wanted to, to do? Yeah, of course. I always used to do school plays and things like that. And I'd perform in those as well throughout primary school, into senior school a little bit as well, like school showcases. I did that, too. And then obviously some more serious stuff as I've grown up a bit. Like last summer, I supported N-Dubs on their tour, which was really good fun. We did some really fun shows there. And that was my first kind of like experience being in front of a big crowd of people performing my own music rather than for a show at school or something like that. So that was really good fun. Do you reckon that was one of your highlights so far then? Oh, defo. Oh, for sure. It's up there, isn't it? Defo, because it was something ridiculous. It was my second show ever, like when I started. And I think the audience was something ridiculous, like 15,000 people. But I did it. So I'm proud of myself for that. And um, are you an independent uh, solo female artist? Um, I am. Right. Um, and what do you enjoy about that aspect of it rather than, say, working with a band or a group? Um, I guess I kind of love the freedom of it is great. Everything is my choice, my decision. Um, I think it saves a lot of going back and forth. Things can happen a bit faster. And yeah, everything's kind of how I want it to be. I don't, that kind of sounds really selfish almost. But yeah. I guess like it's my image, my creation yeah. is my brand, whatever. Yeah. Um, I'd say it probably makes life a lot easier, to be honest. And That's good. <laughs> That's good. Um, and um, one of the reasons why I wanted to get you onto uh, my programme was that I know you're promoting or pl uh, plugging a new single out at the moment. So just tell me just a little bit more about that single. Yeah, so that is my new single called This One's Gonna Hurt, which came out, I think two and a bit weeks ago or something around that mm -hmm. um so that's actually my first song that I've released that's actually written about me my own personal experience because normally I draw from my friends situations and that's what I tend to write about um but this one's about me um so that's quite nice because it's quite vulnerable well it's my first time being properly vulnerable and kind of bearing my soul a little bit and it's the reason it's called This One's Gonna Hurt is because it's about being so in love with someone or so enamoured with them that you know that, right, if this ended tomorrow, that like, this is going to hurt, like it's going to be tough, but it, like you want it to work. That's kind of what it's about. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to it, can't they? Because uh, I suppose in life experiences, uh, most of us have been there, haven't we, in that predicament? Oh, of course. Mm. And I think that's one of the fun things about music is how people can always find something to yeah. relate. Or oh, there's always going to be someone who will yeah. relate. Because, yeah, we've all been in a situation when you're kind of quite enamoured by someone you think, God, I, mm. it's going to break my heart. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, look about music, how everyone percepts or perceives like a single in their own different, unique way. Totally, which yeah. is so cool. Um, will there be a music video to accompany this single release or in the works or is that something you're thinking of doing? I think not at the moment, I would say, um, although I have just released a lyric video for it, which mm. literally came out, I think, two days ago. So that's all very much kind of on the theme. You can read into the song a bit better because you have the lyrics in front of you and it's all very cool animation style. So definitely go check that out if you haven't. Um, so that's probably going to be the basis for the music video, I think. I know chatting with previous artists as well, like um, directing, creating music videos, um, the budget's quite high, high, isn't it? They're quite expensive to make. And as you said, oh, the visual, yeah. visualizers, they seem to be um, a more cost-effective way of doing things. 
definitely I'd say that's a part of it as well like the last song I did a music video for was my single Wasted It On You which I mean it's so much fun I love filming music videos like it's a great day like dressing up and just playing around and having fun on camera but they are expensive so mm -hmm. that definitely is a factor that plays into it that's so true and where where do you get like your ideas you know when writing and composing songs is it a case of just putting pen to paper or is it more more than that you know you've got to make notes on your your phone I think it my inspiration kind of as I said earlier like I draw on a lot of people around me's experiences and my own as well um, as with this most recent single and then I, I guess I'm kind of always noting things down or taking note in my notes app on my phone um, but yeah just drawing from my people around me what they're going through what they've been through obviously with their permission <laughs> don't want to upset anybody but it's I think it's almost quite therapeutic for my friends when I write about a situation because it gives them something to sing along to when someone's mm. really annoyed them or upset them or they're or they're going through something so it kind of works both ways really some of the greatest ideas happen when you least expect it exactly yeah uh, that's cool and um, do you also like enjoy doing the cover versions they're quite popular you know with festivals you know putting your own stamp on a song you know and making it your own yeah, I think so. I mean, that's what I originally started out doing before I wrote my own music was just recording covers. So I think I'm always going to love that. It's always nice. It's a good way to bring the audience in as well, because in my live shows, I tend to do a little Dua Lipa cover or something like that, um, because obviously I am a smaller known artist. Not everyone's going to know all my lyrics. So it's mm. nice to, have to just bring the crowd back in that they yeah. can see too so yeah I love doing that and then when you're gigging is it hard to like um you know arrange your playlists as well that's an art in itself you know running orders of songs and everything I think I wouldn't say massively actually because I've got a great MD a musical director called Dan he's fab and he helps me kind of figure out the order for the songs and mm. all that good stuff so that's good yeah he's a big help in that space that's good. And who have been your influences and inspirations over the years? There's so many out there at the moment, isn't there? Oh, of course. I would say probably Avril Lavigne's been a big oh. one. Lady Gaga. Um, I think Ash Nico's super cool. Shy Girl. I'd say kind of people in that space. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Avril Lavigne. Like, it's a name which uh, you know of, but you think, oh, yeah, I remember her. I know. Wow. She was a icon i mean she still is to me yeah. i think she's amazing. what do you think of the state of the uh the charts at the moment are, are, are they in a good place do you think like some of the old songs are coming back yeah which i love i love that and i'm i'm really happy to see that pop is once again taking over a bit especially mm. with sabrina carpenter she's yeah. like taking up number one number two number three she's got all the spots yeah um yeah, I'm loving seeing pop come back. Yeah. I think it's do, great. do you like the 80s vibe as well? Like the electro feel to it as well? Oh, of course. Mm. Any like blast from the past, I think is great. Yeah, nostalgia sells, doesn't it? Um, cool. So, yeah, you mentioned that uh, Endubs was one of your uh, highlights um, of your career so far. Is there any others on your hit list or um, you, you like to uh, share or you, you're able to share? Yeah, um, about a month ago, I did um, another one, another show, which was in memory of one of my friends who passed away, actually. And it was, we brought everyone together and his mum organised this whole kind of festival, this whole day. And I performed there and it that was a really, really special day. And it was a lot of people I went to school with in the crowd and performing in kind of my home region was really nice as well. Like it was only 25 minutes from my parents' house. So that was very nostalgic and it was just an all round super special day. And I think that's one that's yeah. always going to stand out for me. That's that's nice. And um, the um, you're based down south, is that right? Like uh, on the coast? So, yeah, that's where I was born and grew up and everything. But I do live in London now mm. and have done for the past two years or so. But that is where my heart is. It's definitely yeah. There's no place like home, is there? Exactly. 
And do you find like um, like relocating was that a bit of a gamble for you, or a, like um, a, a step you had to take to like open up the windows up opportunities? Uh, yeah, I think it was just the step I had to take, to be honest, because the musical opportunities in London are so much more vast than they are back in the countryside. And luckily, London and where I'm originally from in East Sussex, it's not that far. So it's only an hour and a half. Yeah, so sure. doable. So I can yeah. still go back and visit whenever I want, which is That's nice. That's good. Best of, best of both worlds then. Exactly. Right. And I've got to ask, where's best for people to follow you on the social media? There's so many uh, avenues and platforms now where people can follow artists. I'd say my main two is probably Instagram, which is erin.bloomer. And then my TikTok is erin underscore bloomer. Great. And how, how do you find the TikTok life? I mean, I hear people who go on TikTok and they get they smash the views like hundreds of thousands. Have you found that? Yeah, I think I've had a bit of both. It can be hit or miss. I mm. did have a song blow up on TikTok and do really well. And like, honestly, it's an amazing feeling because you're just reaching a, a whole new audience that you never would have mm a hold of before and that in itself is amazing so I think it's a great asset to have I think it can get a bit tedious trying to constantly feel like you're selling yourself on a platform but you've got to do what you've got to do yeah. and it's like with the um with singing now it's so competitive you know it's not just about being on stage you have to I think social media is is a treadmill you have to keep on updating and uh, um, content creation um yeah, yeah there's a lot going on um, isn't there yeah influencers or content mm. creators as well mm. as musicians like it's not just the music anymore you've got to be a personality and yeah all of that so I mean um some elements of that can be enjoyable but then you've got to put all the hashtags on but if, if you're some yeah. people are just great at doing that aren't they yeah some people really have a knack for it I say I'm still working at that mm. but hopefully we'll we'll get there yeah sure it's uh stepping stones isn't it for sure for sure yeah it's like because I've been DJing 20 years and I'm a 20th year. It's perhaps where I'm happy with my level of, of, of playing yeah. at the places I've always dreamed I wanted to play. And then oh, when, when, when you're in, when you're playing at the places that you've always wanted to play at, you're in the moment, so you're living the dream and you, you think to yourself, oh, is this real? I can't believe it. So you're chasing your dream, then you're living your dream and then you, you can't believe it and then it's over. Have you been into that um, situation? I'd say not totally yet. I think I've still hopefully got a lot more to look forward mm. to I kind of am only just diving into the live yeah. performance space in like performing my own songs at shows and things like that so I think hopefully there's still a lot more to look forward to yeah Graham sure there is and I'm um, just looking on like uh, your um reviews from you know magazines and publishments and they seem to be very um uh, complimentary oh that's always good to hear <laughs> yeah no luckily people are very kind and seem that's to good. like it good sign yeah brilliant well lovely chatting with you erin today and uh also for me to is really get uh, your uh, new track on my show with um with yeah with your permit if that's all right yeah of course i'd love that yeah would you like to introduce it on so coming up next is this one's gonna hurt by me erin bloomer it's lovely chatting with you today and wish you all the best with this new record amazing thank you so much and uh have a great day you too.